Hi friends, you are welcome in this video. Friends, in this video we are going to discuss about a very famous American author, poet, critic and short story writer, Azure Allen Poe and his poem, Two Signs. So here our discussion will be based on the poem, Two Signs and Azure Allen Poe. So let's start with the background of Azure Allen Poe. Basically, Azure Allen Poe is known as the short story writer and he is also a very prolific critic because he evolved uh, for the first time in uh, English literature, he composed uh, the theory of uh, uh, short story writing with Nathanael Hawthorne in uh, 1830 and later this uh, theory is considered by many authors and many short story writers or storytellers in composition of their short stories and he and hence he is very aptly called as the father of detective fiction because he composed many mystery stories and uh, he was fond of telling the mystery stories and uh, there are many famous mystery stories uh, still today uh, read by many uh, uh, readers or the audience prefers his uh, stories mystery stories and hence he is considered as the father of detective fiction so friends uh, again uh, if you look at the life of Azure Allen Poe and he was probably the first American writer who made uh, his livelihood or uh, living completely based on literature as a critic and writer and uh, hence we find that there is misery in his life so uh, his days he spent in poverty and there was no prosperity in his life but still he was sticked to the uh, very career as a literary uh, person or as a writer or poet and he composed so many fine short stories and also poems he also composed a play which was not so famous but he also tried the genre of playwriting and uh, if we think about his life we can compare his uh, misery of life with the veteran marathi literary giant anna bhausathe there is similarity between the uh, life of Anna Bhausathe and Azure Allen Poe because Azure Allen Poe spent many days in uh, misery or his life was filled with all oh, losses. In the I same know. way, we also uh, find there is misery in the life of Anna Bhausathe and so we can compare uh, the misery of uh, these two veterans. But uh, these both veterans are very uh, sticked with their profession that is uh, critic and uh, writer or author or poet Anna Bhausathe was also a very fine poet in Asian Marathi Poe. so and this uh, is the comparison between Anna Bhausathe and uh, Azure Allen Poe so friends here uh, we have some of his uh, famous works let me read out these works so that you can uh, understand how uh, his works are famous the very first here I listed is The Raven it is a collection of poetry or a poem uh, then second we have The Mask of Red Death uh, Third, we have the Tell Tale Heart, uh, which is a very basic uh, short story in the field of short story development. Then we have number four, The Fall of the House of Usher, and uh, last year I listed The Gold Bug. There are so many other short stories and poems also, which you can find and read. Now, friends, let's move to his uh, short poem uh, that is Two Signs. So, what is there in Two Signs? Uh, first, uh, before analyzing or before uh, taking the summary of two signs let's uh, structurally analyze uh, this poem basically this is an english sonnet as uh, we have discussed in the previous videos that how uh, english sonnet is uh, composed in three quatrains and a couplet the same structure is followed here in this uh, sonnet or in this composition of poem by azure allen poe so azure allen poe's uh, this poem is also considered as a lament uh, and uh, we are going to discuss this theme and uh, a very summary of this poem uh, in the next. So let's first understand the very structure. This is an English sonnet and in this sonnet we find uh, the very compact rhyming scheme as we find uh, this as a rhyming scheme in any English sonnet or in Shakespearean sonnet. So here we have the rhyming scheme as A B A B C D C D. E F E F and the last couplet is G G. Now these uh, three quatrains are separate uh, by this uh, rhyming scheme A B A B and C D C D and uh, E F E F. So these three quatrains are separate uh, by this rhyming scheme. And uh, when we look at this sonnet, we find that poet had used iambic pentameter in the 
composition and this ionic pentameter is a very natural kind of meter used almost in english poems or in english sonnets as we have discussed before and in the same way in this sonnet we also have this kind of a structure iambic pentameter in iambic pentameter the very first uh, syllable is unstressed and uh, the second syllable is stressed unstressed syllable followed by stressed syllable comprises of the iam and this pattern continues five times in a line and hence it is called as iambic pentameter so uh, uh, in the very composition of this uh, sonnet Ajar Allan Poe used so many figures of speech and here we have prominent figure metaphor and he gives metaphorically many things in this sonnet. Again we have personification, then uh, we have alliteration, then we have assonance and uh, other kinds of uh, figures of speech in this sonnet. Uh, and uh, the very thing uh, about this sonnet is he used so many question marks in this sonnet. If we uh, find uh, sonnet comprises of 14 lines and in this 14 lines he used 7 uh, question marks means we find that there is 50% of question marks in the poem and this question marks clearly states that he has something to share with us and he has some doubts and he wanted answers to these doubts so this is the very uh, analysis of uh, this uh, question marks again uh, the very beginning of this poem is with interjection or he uses exclamations in the course of this poem and this also gives uh, some kind of analysis here in this poem so friends this is all about the structural uh, area of sonnet to size now let's uh, know what is there in this sonnet and uh, what is the theme of this sonnet and how this sonnet is uh, composed and the very summary of this sonnet. So let me read first the very first quatrain and then we will try to dissect the quatrain. The science. True daughter of old time thou art, who alterest all things with thy peering eyes. Why prayest thou thus upon the poet's heart? Vulture, whose wings are dull realities. Now this is the first quatrain and in this first quatrain the very beginning uh, here we have the word science and after science we have interjection or exclamation. Now this states that the very theme of this poem is based on science or science is the theme of this poem. Now when we read the very first line we understand that poet is addressing science and he is saying that science is the daughter of old time now here old time represents uh, a kind of thing that is already existed in ancient time and uh, this science is the daughter of this ancient time now here we have personification the science is personified actually science is an abstract entity but he personified uh, science and he called science as daughter of old time now old time this word is used in negative sense that it is something old and it is something ancient and now we have something new now these two things here we get in this uh, very first line then in the second line uh, we have the very word peering eyes now he uses this peering eyes for the science and again the very question comes why prayest thou thus upon the poet's heart now here we find that Poet is negative regarding science and he is uh, having fear of science. So there is fear in the mind of poet about science and he says that now science is uh, directly plucking out the very heart of poetry. Now here we have science and poetry. So poetry is creative or creativity in this poem and science is used as something old or something ancient. Now this comparison leads us in the next part of the sonnet and here we have uh, a very uh, fourth line that is vulture whose wings are dull realities now he is calling science directly as vulture now vulture is a bird which preys or the basic food of uh, this vulture is uh, based on the other animals and uh, hence he is calling science directly vulture whose wings are dull realities now what is science science is nothing but the dull realities here is the metaphor he is using uh, wings of uh, vulture as the 
dull realities of science. So this is the very first yeah, part. This so solid is so composed in the uh, very initial stage of the 19th century. And uh, in 19th century, the industrial revolution in Europe has been at its culmination. And this uh, industrial revolution is moving in the America. And uh, he has seen some of the inventions of this industrial revolution or some of the uh, industrial development and hence he composed this sonnet and we can relate this sonnet to the industrial revolution and hence we find that poet is negative about uh, the very uh, science or about the very industrial revolution because he has fear in his mind that this industrial revolution or this science will um, dry you out the very imagination, the very poetry, the very literature and the significance of literature or poetry will be diminished in the course of this industrial revolution. So this is the basic background of this poem uh, if we consider or if we analyze it uh, on the level of historical approach. So we find that uh, this sonnet is relates with the industrial revolution. Now friends let's move to the uh, second quatrain or the next stanza of the poem and uh, let me read how should he love thee or how deem thee wise who wouldst not leave him in his wandering to seek for treasure in the jeweled skies albeit he soared with an undoubted wing now friends in the second stanza we find the thought of uh, negativity or the negative thought is leading or moving uh, forward in the uh, stanza here we also have the beginning of this stanza with a question mark how should he love thee now who is here he the very pronoun he is used for poet or any poet for, for that matter we can say or this pronoun also uh, can be used for the poet now poet is fearful about uh, the uh, invention of science or the very science and he is stating or he is explaining that how should i love thee how should i love the science which has plucked out the very heart of poetry which has uh, coming to destroy the very poetry now he is doubtful and hence he is asking this question and the next he says that how dream the wise how, it is not possible for him to consider science as wise because for him poetry or literature is everything and poetry or literature is already a very creative kind of thing imaginative kind of thing and on this thing this science has come and it is destroying the very power of imagination who would us not leave him in his wandering to seek for treasure in the jeweled skies, albeit he soared with the undaunted wing. Now he here uh, thinks that the poet has the power of seeking the jeweled skies. Poet can imagine uh, on a very higher level. Poet can imagine the beautiful world and it is not possible for science to imagine on the level of poet and hence he is considering that how a poet will soar in the sky and how a poet will find the jeweled ornaments in the world if this uh, science is marching ahead uh, of the poetry. So this concern again he has here in this sonnet. Now we find that poet has certain kind of accusations regarding science or just he is blaming science clearly in this uh, stanza. Now friends we have the next stanza or the third quatrain here of this sonnet and let me read. Hast thou not dragged Dinah from her car and driven the hammerdrag from the wood to seek a shelter in some happier star? Hast thou not torn the night from her flood? Friends, the third stanza, in the third stanza, we have some mythological references. The very first reference is of Diana. Diana is a goddess uh, we find in Greek and Roman mythology and it is the goddess of hunting and virginity. This goddess wanders uh, at the night um, in the uh, sky or uh, on the moon and if this science will develop, then this very mythological tales, this very mythological uh, imaginations will be vanished from the mind of people and people will think that uh, science as is uh, giving us the realities and now we know that moon is a moon and there is no uh, one who lives on the moon but here in mythology we find that Diana lives on the 
moon now this uh, fairy tale or this mythology will be vanished uh, at the advancement of the science and this fear is in the mind of uh, poet again he gives a reference or a mythological reference of the night nights are the nymphs who live on the water then we have elves then we have hamadrad hamadrad is a living creature a mythological living creature uh, who lives in the trunk of uh, uh, tree and uh, as tree dies the same creature dies but this is a mythology or this is a tale and now uh, science has proved that there is nothing in the uh, tree or there is nothing called uh, hamadrad in the tree who lives in the trunk of the tree and uh, so that this reference or uh, this mythology has been vanished uh, as we uh, know about the advancement of science or science has proved this uh, thing so friends uh, this mythological tales will be vanished if science will get on this uh, mythology so here uh, Ajay Allen Poe is very clear that uh, he has a fear in his mind and he is expressing this fear he is blaming science that science is making lame poetry making poet lame in the light of uh, very development so this is here in this uh, stanza so let's move to the uh, last couplet and uh, here is the couplet the elfin elfin from the green grass and from me the summer dream beneath the tamarind tree again here we find there is a question mark at the end of this sonnet and this doubt is persisted in the mind of uh, poet and poet is doubtful and he is asking the very answer of his questions now friends in this uh, last uh, couplet we find that poet is positive and he is talking about summer, summer dream summer dream is nothing but that poetry will get a very good days and uh, poetry and science will go parallelly and there will be no competition between poetry and science as he is giving us the reference of summer day summer so day. friends thank you very much for watching this complete uh, tutorial on two science by Ajay Allen Poe please like this video share this video among your friends and subscribe to literature simply and also don't forget to press the bell notification icon for updates on language and literature